Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. If you would like to support the channel in delivering more content like this, you can via Buy Me A Coffee for just £3. We appreciate all of your support. So, welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast, everybody. It's been a while, but we're back today with Kerry Wilmot of Nebo Air. Hello, Kerry. Hello. How are you? Glad to have you on the podcast. Um, She's here to tell us about her quest to move towards sustainable flight training using the Pipistrelle range of aircraft. So, as time's gone on, we've noticed certainly that there is a, a demand for a, a new type of training aircraft you know the stuff that we're using currently the 152s and 172s they've been around since the 1970s 1980s you know and they are that old the ones that we're using um and i find it really strange in this day and age that you can turn up to learn to fly in an electric car or whatever with all the modern technology in it and then you get in something with a carburetor um you know things that are not working in them and, and generally they just you know they're, they're perfectly safe but they just look old and they feel old but yet none of the manufacturers other than probably diamond have gone towards anything modern in terms of training and the diamond is quite prohibitively expensive for a small training school perhaps for the commercial ones it's fine so we've been looking towards ultralight for a long time that kind of category of aircraft stumbled across Pipistrelle in I think it was 2019 just before the lockdown flew the SW121 with Deepak loved it but we thought it was so different at the time we were sort of unsure about whether it was the right move or the wrong move um so we actually surveyed some of our students and things and they gave us some feedback and and we thought at that time maybe it was too much too soon and all the rest of it but we then heard about the electric the velis electro and thought i mm, want to be on that fairly early on in its life um and then we started dialogue with these cells so kerry please do take over and tell us about nebo Air, how it began and how you got involved well i think um i used to work for the people well, i still do work for one of the gentlemen that was the founder of nebo Air. yeah and he was one of the original directors mm-hmm. of flyback aviation with deepak yes When the Velis Electro came into the UK, which was the end, I think, of 2020, um, we made the decision that Nebo Air would be born to give a path towards sustainable aviation rather than trying to sell it beside the fossil fuel. And Nebo Air isn't about selling the aircraft. It's Mm -hmm. about potentially being able to lease the aircraft into flying schools because many of the flying schools aren't in a position to spend 200,000 euros on a brand new airframe. Yeah. Lots of people uh, probably feel it's inhibitive of its flight times, but it is designed as a training aircraft for circuit Mm -hmm. training. Mm -hmm. So when you piece it together and fly it side by side with the SW121, the navigational can be put into the consideration. All ab initios and revalidations can be done on the electro. And for those with their current PPLs, they can have... Um, uh, differences with a flight instructor differences training with a flight instructor which is potentially three to five flights depending on how long it takes you to get to grip with the aircraft but the biggest thing for us is not to preach sustainability to anybody but every pilot learning to fly is putting between three and a half and five and a half of ton of co2 into the atmosphere during their journey to a ppl Mm -hmm. and the velis electro flies emission free so if you can do a percentage of your training mission free it helps all the way through yeah no that's brilliant so with you that's your vision for nebo air is to to get to a point where we're completely emission free or i think we a lot of the velis uh, we now have nine velis alongside four sw121s in the uk yeah and it's about working with like-minded flying schools and flying clubs and to gently introduce those into their fleets Mm -hmm. Um, Saxon Air and Norwich has had a Velis Electro for a fair while now and they've just introduced the 121 mm-hmm. um, Airborne Aviation down at Popham yeah. they've also got the Velis Electro within their fleet for experienced flights and beginning to do revalidations yeah. and I think the the greatest transformation is that Moray Flying Club which is based at RAF Lossiemouth yes. have actually changed their fleet so they're flying wholly yeah. purpose roll now and that is part of the journey to be as sustainable as they can on lossy mouth yeah i mean i, I like pipistrelle as a brand the only things i would say the sw121 is i felt at the time it was a little bit too complex 
comparably to operating what we currently had. And I, I guess if you start from scratch on the SW121, you don't know any different, which is probably the best way to do it. But I think somebody to ask somebody to transition partway through their training would be asking for trouble, I think, or, or certainly asking a lot of the student to trans to, you know to transition everybody who we speak to within this journey yeah um once they've flown the aircraft either one they, yeah, yeah. they love the aircraft oh no it's, there's no doubt about that it's a fantastic you know it's a fantastic tool but i think at some point we're going to want to do this you know yeah. with, with the package i think and but it's going to be people starting from scratch on that aircraft because one thing i'm really keen on is even if they fly like a 172 or a 152 if somebody says oh i want to switch aircraft i'm very you know keen to get to the, the reasons why yeah. and if the reason isn't strong enough i'll say don't do it because you will backtrack a little bit and you're training to get used to this new one why pipistrelle as as a brand well flyabout aviation have been yeah. the pipistrelle distributor for mm -hmm. microlite and for certified for oh i think 12 years now and they are the leading it was it, well, at the time it was a family-run company yeah um it's now been bought out by Textron Aviation and they still are leading the way yeah. in having so effectively it's that, still that's the Cessna world's anyway, isn't it? only certified electric aircraft. If you look at it like that, you know, I'm saying that the the mainstream uh, manufacturers aren't doing it, but Textron are. I've heard that Diamond are doing an electric aircraft as well. I do believe so, yeah. Um, but again, I, I think, don't know how far they are on their route. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of ours is... We're on second generation batteries now. Yeah. They're, you know, potentially looking at what can be done with the batteries. Yeah. There are several people um, pushing to get an ePPL. We don't yeah. need an electric PPL. It's yeah. about working and engaging with the CAA yeah. to bring forward exactly how much of a current LAPL or PPL you can do on the electric. Yeah. From what we've seen so far in our journey with the differences training is a lot of it, the... the the airframe's an airframe. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the flight controls are the same. The, the biggest thing is learning about how to manage energy, which That's, is interesting. Absolutely. You know? And, you know, we've had... We first went to Fully Charged Live ooh, two years ago now um, at work at Farnborough. And the questions over and over again were, how far can I fly? What happens when the batteries die? Can we put the batteries in a Spitfire? Can I go to Ibiza? No. <laughs> no. And it's, you know, not going to fall out of the sky. The two batteries work independently of each other. Yeah. If you lost both batteries, you have a small battery that then runs your instruments. Yeah. And it's a 15 to 1 glide ratio. Impressive glide ratio it is. And, and that's demonstrated in the approach technique. It's a power off approach technique. Yeah. You know, there's not many aircraft you'd want to idle them back at, you know, every time on, on base leg and, and come in. So it, it, it's great. It really is. And I'm hoping at some point the battery technology will move on enough that we can have maybe, I don't know, like an hour and a half range or something like that, where it could quite easily then become something you could do your cross-country flights with. Very much so. And, yeah. I mean, we but we work on a concept that it is designed as a circuit trainer. Yeah. But we will have, for instance, you know, we're here at Coventry now. Yeah. We have a charger at Wellsbourne and we have a charger at Leicester. Yeah. So working on a triangular training ground, yeah. you can fly, land away, yeah. pop up your recharge fly away again yeah. and we're not um, promoting navigational flight as such because it's the, the whole reason of it is you know circuit yeah. training but to do that the same we're able to do that at Popham yeah. um, we have charges well, we have 16 charges across the country so if we want to do cross country flights we can do yeah. um, but it is it's a home based aircraft but I think for, for us, I wanted to get involved now because I figured that it's something that down the line, if even if it isn't the Valis Electro, it'll be something else that Pipistrelle do that's going to be the future. Very you know? much so. Um, I mean, it's the journey isn't, you know, you've got what certainly came out of Fully Charged is the amount of younger people we met who would like to learn to fly, but yeah. they're very concerned about their carbon footprint. Yeah. You can do all your experience flights on this to see whether the people would like to you know, engage at that level. But we also had CEOs and chairmen of green companies that were yeah. pilots that have given up flying because it doesn't work with the ethos of their green businesses. Oh, okay. And if that means they can come and revalidate their PPLs, yeah. have differences training, 
and go and fly for the afternoon yeah. down to Wellsbourne, have tea, recharge their aircraft and come back again. It works. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, you think about it, it's crazy, really, but we're still using leaded fuel, right? Absolutely. And I can't remember when, when did leaded fuel go out of general circulation? It was like 80s, wasn't it? Yes. It was 80s. I believe so. I remember it because you had four star, didn't you? Then it was unleaded and people were having to get their engines, the valves converted and all this stuff. Um, so, yeah, that went well out of general circulation for automotive and it's still now being used in aeroplanes and it's the lubricating properties i think of the lead that you know helps um the safety with the engine but you know rotax for years have been using unleaded which is why we were kind of moving towards maybe something with a rotax engine that's when we looked at the sw121 but you know that's not that's still using fossil fuel so it is i mean the greenest route your ppl is to use the 121 beside the velis electro yeah. and yeah. certainly as far as finances are concerned if the new we've got two brand new explorers in the country one's yeah. now gone to lossy mouth one's with saxon air if they are used solely on unleaded yeah you go to 100 hour checks rather than 50 hour checks so you have yeah. an Im- immediate saving with Absolutely. with your output yeah um standard aircraft is going to cost you between 40 and 60 pound an hour on fuel yeah the velis will cost you probably about eight to twelve pound an hour to charge yes she's on a hundred hour checks um i think financially the differences are probably the insurance so the biggest yeah. sort of hiccup with it but we're getting there with the insurances yeah, and absolutely. everybody's scared of the unknown absolutely and, and part, that's partly the reason why we haven't done it up until now it's um everyone's scared of the unknown but i quite like the challenge so it's i uh, think a lot of it is we just there's no point in at the end of the day you're all pilots and there is no point in us coming to you and saying and preaching sustainability we are a member of sustainable aviation we love working with the like-minded companies but for you as a training school and for other pilots which for as long as you have been doing this is on fossil is on the fossil fuels all we can do is plant a seed and engage. And you and I have been speaking for a fair time now about yeah, this. Absolutely, yeah. Lossy Mouth yeah. took us, or well, we probably were speaking for a year to 18 months before we actually got to the point of engaging to the point of an yeah. aircraft. Yeah. Um, Saxon Air have had an aircraft there and they've now gone to the stage where they have their own training school. So it ha- that's how it developed. And mm-hmm. again with Popham, it's exactly the same. Yeah. So I think we're going into it with our eyes open and just thinking, Very you know, much it's, so. we, we're not you know i've already had people saying oh you can't do a full ppl on yeah, yeah i get that but that's not what we're doing but that's <laughs> you know? where we engage directly yeah. with the caa and Absolutely. by work the caa have been nothing but incredible through this journey with me yeah um everything nebo has done we have spoken to them been open with them and grown you know we haven't even down to the flight training flight yeah. training current ppl ppl owners you have to do your differences yeah with somebody who's certified to do it it yeah. is a certified aircraft yeah absolutely um so we just want to do it properly but i mean in fairness even i mean you can technically fly a single engine piston aircraft any single engine piston aircraft within reason on your license as a ppl um but there's nobody well there may be people out there but certainly not that i've met that would let you come in and say that oh, there's my license i can fly i've never flown a 172 or whatever um there's the keys off you go you've got an scp rating it didn't work so no. for us we always do differences training on anything and this is a little bit more complicated because it's a whole new propulsion system that we've not come across and there are a lot of different aspects i mean when we're talking about the energy planning um you know bob was saying to me look when you've got a tailwind you might want to consider um using less power and using the wind to keep you going you know and then use the power into the headwind on the way back so absolutely silly little things like that when you've got loads of fuel on board you're not really thinking about you know you are thinking of fuel management on you know obviously but you've got such a reserve that it's not of a worry you know but with this it's you know you've you've got a small reserve and you've got to be thinking i need to be managing this energy properly and i think it make you a good pilot 
you know, because you've got to think about this stuff. You think about it. The ground yeah. score is so incredibly important, yeah. both yeah, for yeah. the familiarisation. So if you're going on to the one two one from, yeah. uh, you will have familiarisation with your differences training. Everybody needs to do the ground school. Yeah, absolutely. And it is a huge part of it. And understanding the intricacies of the batteries, and we always say, land on 30%. Yeah. It's as you would with your fuel. Yeah. Land on 30%. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I think we've already covered this, but can you just give us a quick overview of why you think the SW121 and the Electro as a package is a much better proposition for any student looking to learn to fly? Um, at the moment over a normal conventional fleet i think it's very much that the journey it's the most sustainable route Mm -hmm. if that's how you're looking at things so um it's light modern fresh aircraft yeah they complement each other if you had them lined up side by side you would struggle to work out which is fossil fuel and which is electric absolutely um and it gives the option it really does give the option especially for the young people now who are they're concerned of their carbon footprint and it gives you a choice to be able to follow this yeah and certainly if we were to be able to work with you know the academies even on the airline academies yeah to be able to do the early stages of flight training sustainably Mm. If they then drop out after four or five weeks saying, yeah. actually, this isn't for me, yeah. you've done it with no yeah. carbon footprint. Absolutely. And, and on that note, I know we spoke about this on the phone the other day, but um, I've, I've got twins, as you know, and they one of them is quite wild and the other one's, you know, Captain Sensible. <laughs> and they're only 10, right? But I was trying to trade my car in and one, the one who's very sensible hated my old car because it was like six cylinder, three litre twin turbo thing. It was ridiculously fast, but it wasn't very economical in the mm-hmm. slightest. And he was always moaning at me saying, oh, you're putting out loads of emissions, daddy. <laughs> and the other one's like, oh, I like it because it's noisy. <laughs> and, um, anyway, he was trying to convince me to get a Tesla and I ended up not getting either. But um, but it was just funny how a 10-year-old is so worried. And they're obviously teaching this stuff in school now. They are, he was yeah. so worried about his carbon footprint. Just on another note, though, the, the other things that I thought of, which I, I was thinking, what are the benefits of using the, the modern fleet? is the equipment you know yeah. you you look at um like an sw121 and somebody who's transitioning onto airlines for example um it's quite a complex airplane you know really you've got um you've got the touch screen the garmin g3x so yeah. you've got a glass cockpit which you're going to experience in the airline in, you know environment anyway it's got the three axis autopilot um obviously we're not going to be teaching that stuff in to some degree in the ppl but they need to know how to use it if it's in there and it's got safety systems like the ballistic parachute which again is something you only really saw in cirrus aircraft before Mm -hmm. which you know so it's safety you know so you've got the modern equipment you've got the reliability because like you said they're they're doing 100 hour service in there they're not going offline as much um you've got the safety the safety aspects the carbon footprint and the noise they're so quiet even the one two ones really quiet absolutely you know we were laughing earlier weren't we that this thing's going past and you can barely hear it now we get a lot of noise complaints here in fact i did speak to there's one guy in particular who used to regularly haunt me with his noise complaints but he ain't going to complain about that because he ain't going to be able to hear it you know? i mean it's just certainly it's, uh, the, the velis is um 60 decibel and yeah. if you have got a noise abatement even if you were to look at it for your early more early weekend mornings yeah lessons and flight experiences they're not going to hear it go over yeah. we recently filmed um with one of the major people yeah and they would we had permission to film and use a drone at the same time yeah and we could hear the drone and not the aircraft, not the aircraft. yeah no absolutely in fact we did some footage today didn't we and there was yeah. some in aircraft footage where usually you've got quite a lot of background noise on your videos and then you can hear the the voice on the comms but it was actually almost a bit you want to put some music on it to liven it up a bit because it's so quiet when they're not talking it's um it's something else we've recently done that so we fly um two years ago the electric arrows were launched yeah and we've been flying and this year we've done ria and farmer international we were launched at old buckingham where there is the uk's only solar charging uh so our aircraft are charged purely off the sun and 
I'd love to promote that, the solar aspect into all airfields, um, but it's like a carport, we charge the aircraft yeah. of. Um, but we went to Syaston this year as well for Families Day yeah. for the RAF, and we then put it to music because actually yeah. when you follow the typhoon on a flying display and they said, well, how do we introduce this? And it's like, pray silent for the Velis Electro. Yeah. And there's only, you can't hear it. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, you're saying about the solar. Me and Dan were having a conversation in the car literally yesterday about this, saying he'd seen some charging panels that were like almost like like paper sort of, not paper thin, but like a sheet, you know. Yeah. And I'm, what I'm hoping is one day that I don't know how realistic this is because I'm not an aircraft engineer, but if you could have like the upper surface of the wing as a, like a, a, a you know, a solar panel sticker almost so it doesn't affect the airflow um it could be charging itself incredible new company that's come on board recently who yeah. um we're just going to start doing some promotional work with yeah that are have developed sort of lightweight solar panels wow. for you know we've you know you're here with the world war ii hangers yeah. they've got fairly lightweight roofs and yet yeah, something yeah. has now been developed to be able to yeah. place solar onto airfields yeah no that's good it's inevitable that you'll have faced a lot of challenges on the way but i know you have to be talked in detail about it i mean certainly there's some things i've put up on here so we've Obviously, regulatory and certification. Obviously, the Pipistrol will have been working with the UK CAA and things to do that, but I know you've been working closely with them as well. Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, she came over as the ASA approved, and yeah. I think the following February, uh, she went through UK CAA. Yeah. And now it's just recognising the correct route to service, I suppose. And, yeah. you know, it's a fully certified aircraft. Some people look at her and think maybe... She's a bit like a micro light and they yeah. can, but she has to be, you know, she has yeah. to be under a camo, under a maintenance organisation. Yeah. Um, we've got five of those across the UK now. So mm -hmm. we're covered sort of most angles. Yeah. Um, and so, it's working with recognising the licensing side of it, as well yeah. as the regulatory with um, servicing and camo. So where does it fall in? Because at the minute, obviously you've got your PPL, you've got your SEP rating. It's working at, where does it fit in with the licensing? Well, I think it's working with the CAA to yeah. encourage that the aircraft can be used to yeah. as your circuit trainer and to build mm. hours towards your the lap pulling your PPO and your yeah. SCP. Yeah. Um, it's going forward where that changes, if it needs to change. Yeah. It's it's being, you know, if it can be rewritten, that the lapel can be achieved solely on electric, Mm. Um, which will be the navigational part of that needs mm. to be, um, you know, considered. It change. It's a little bit of a game changer. Mm. But until then, it's using something within its boundaries. I mean, I look. I drive a car that's. I don't drive an electric car. I'm very yeah. open about that. But yeah. I cover hundreds, thousands of miles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And but what I do have is an eco car. Yeah. And it's horses for courses. So yeah. I would probably have a far bigger footprint stopping and charging and stopping and charging across the country mm. depending on what i'm doing than using what i use at the moment and i think if the velis electric can fit into flight training and mainly at the moment flight experiences and yeah. to just encourage and grow the utilization of this aircraft within flight training yeah it's you know it's a path that we can go down absolutely so we talked about aircraft range and i think we're all hoping that there might be a scenario whereby there's extra range with it at some point so it can be used for that charging network i'm quite impressed when i spoke to you again that you've you've made some significant inroads into getting charges around places to, to make it work i mean certainly when um, we first we start started the journey by the end of 21 we had um seven charges out there and they are open to the public to use but the yeah. public don't have electric aircraft yeah anyone that's got one of the velis electros is welcome to use where our charges are the airfields that we've worked with have been incredible mm -hmm. um if you've got a three phase on site we can bring a mobile charger in with mm -hmm. with your air, you know each aircraft comes with its own it's mobile same charger, charger. Yeah. and we've also got additional mobile chargers we put you know, one at Leicester, one at Wellsbourne, there's one at Goodwood, um, Drayton, Duxford. Yep. So we build that across Red Hill. And then wherever there are aircraft bases, obviously charges for people to stop and fly as well. 
I know one of the things we're planning on doing is trying to promote it through the Aviator Show as well as the podcast. Mm -hmm. And at some point, it sounds a bit crazy at the minute, but I want to try and get it onto the Isle of Wight. <laughs> so we're going to obviously work with you guys with the charging network, see how far yeah. we can get with it. So the yeah, charging network we've covered, changes in pilot perception. Again, it's. I think it's. There's going to be a lot of negativity around it, and when people don't understand stuff, not negativity, but persuasion needed in changing people's outlook on stuff. And I think you've just got to look at it and what it is at the minute. It's a circuit trainer, but yeah. what it could be in the future could be something vastly different. Absolutely, you know? <laughs> they will be. They're working on battery technology all the time. Yeah. Um, and I think if you take your hours lesson. Yeah. And you generally sit and take that lesson apart and take a lesson with the velis apart yeah by the time you've done your external pre-flight checks and your internal pre-flight checks and you've turned your fossil fuel engine on and you've sat idling for as long as you need to and done your weight and balance and all the way through you have your weight and balance with mm -hmm. your fuel whereas the velis electro is well that's, your weight and balance is you and your pupil or absolutely you know person yeah. you're flying it's yeah. it's like a stop start car yeah and so the you know, you taxi to the end of the runway and prepare, you know, and wait, mm -hmm. you turn it off. Yeah. And then off you go again. That is, yeah, I found that quite quite funny watching them this morning because we were both stood there for ages waiting for them to do something. And because it hasn't got any lights either. So no. when I see an aeroplane with a beacon on, I'm thinking, right, they're about to start or they've just shut down or whatever. So when you watch somebody and you're filming them, you can you know that a few you know a few minutes after the beacon's gone on, they're going to shout clear prop and go. Yeah. And we stood there like a pair of wallies with the camera, waiting for them to do something. <laughs> then all of a sudden the prop starts moving, but it, it's just you know it's just different. It really is. And people are scared of different, and actually yeah. you know embrace it. Absolutely. Um, so pilot perception, we talked about that. Um, and I think that will just come over time with more people using it, more people will buy into it. Uh, safety management. So we talked about um, making sure that we have significant reserve to land with and things like that. Safety around handling the batteries, around educating fire crews. Uh, one thing we did here was is that we wanted to talk to air traffic before we even flew today and just said, look, we are in a battery aircraft. Um, if we're compelled to land we're compelled to land okay right. so we, we talked about um educating the um fire crews and air traffic and things like that um, and generally the people working within the, the school as well making sure that everyone understands their responsibility for safety i think it's really important very much so i mean yeah. we as you know before we fly in anywhere we we ensure that yourself traffic control and the fire crews have all documents in advance Absolutely. that can advise them on the aircraft whether Absolutely. you are fully converse as a trained pilot and have done your differences training somewhere else if an aircraft is coming into a new training school with new fire crew and atc that have never seen one yeah we ensure that they have all the documents they need so that Absolutely. they're conversing it and certainly as an organization safety management is everyone's responsibility yeah very much so, so. it's not um you know if i see something i don't like i say something if somebody else sees something they don't like they say something yeah. you know and it's very much that um so we know insurance is a <laughs> absolute bastard quite frankly in, in aviation anyway <laughs> certainly after lockdown there was everyone was having accidents as a result of pilot um lack of uh, free uh, recency and currency and yeah. um, that forced people out of the insurance industry leaving very few people within it able to charge lots of money for it and i know that when we had the helicopter that thing was 11 or 12 grand I know now that the the velis electro is also in helicopter territory for pricing um, yes, i mean when one of the biggest hurdles is the aircraft was here um so flyback aviation had the first aircraft first electric come in mm -hmm. um and it took us a considerable amount of time to source insurance yes um yeah. a lot of the mainstream were worried about yeah um jumping in with it so to speak and we went with air cortage they have been utterly brilliant mm -hmm. um what started off the aircraft were twelve and a half thousand pound a year <laughs> each to do yeah by the second coming into by the time she'd been here 12 months and we had four we put them onto a fleet insurance yeah and we was able to drop that considerably yeah and then this year as well it's gone because we've now got the amount of aircraft we have and yeah. she says touching wood we are 
okay yeah. and fairly safe at the moment. Yeah. Um, that, because we don't have an incident on record, yeah. as such, our um, the insurance has dropped again. Yeah. Um, how much that will drop, I, d I don't know. Yeah, but we're still looking in the region, including public liability, of about £9,000 a year per aircraft. Yeah, that's yeah, significant. Uh, maintenance network was the last thing, so you've you've said earlier on that you've got 45 isn't it now yeah um, so um the majority of the aircraft are under camo maintenance with skyborne at gloucester yeah um fast aviation at bournemouth yeah the aircraft up at raf lossiemouth are now under highland aviation because it's mm. such a long way away yeah and Ariane Aviation have been brilliant at Rochester. Yeah. And I think the next latest one we've got coming on board is they will be doing their own maintenance at Norwich. Okay. Um, I don't think I've missed anybody out. I'm sure that's where we're at. <laughs> and um, certainly Eastern Airways looked after the aircraft. We did a six-month, three-phase Pathfinder project with the RAF. Yeah. Um, Eastern Airways at Humberside looked after the aircraft under them. And BAE Systems have their own privately owned aircraft and yeah. there is if we if we needed to call on him the gentleman up um with bae is also certified to be able to do the maintenance within them okay so next steps for pipistrelle i know pipistrelle um is the, the brand you're working with you is there any little glimmers of things you can tell us about things that are in the pipeline for the for the fleet at no, all i mean of, no, i mean we hope that the batteries will improve very soon. Mm -hmm. They have got the Pantera, which is just a beautiful yeah, aircraft. Lovely, yeah. um, that will be coming on board very soon. And I think it's hoped that that will go electric one day as well. Yeah. So as a four-seater, it would be just stunning. It's a stunning-looking aircraft. Absolutely. But Pippa's Draw have their own journey. Um, we are just the leasing company. We're not the yeah. distributors for them. And But we we love the aircraft we use yeah the only thing we talked about was there is perhaps if we can get hold of the club velus so absolutely just just putting it out there you know <laughs> a club velus would be great <laughs> I, I i have had the conversation yeah. with um the worldwide sales gentleman behind yeah. behind pipstro and i actually mentioned it to him the other day as well so yeah. if we can get one in the uk Absolutely, then yeah. i think maybe we'd, we'd we like should bring it here it, to try please. it <laughs> i just think it is almost identical from a cockpit yes. perspective to the electro yeah um, i have fed that yeah. back to them so next thing is okay um is giraffes on tour now i'll let you tell the story but i was very i had no idea what this was which i'm quite embarrassed about now because it's quite an important cause um but one of my friends texted me the other day and said oh my god you've got one of those electric airplanes you must know about got and i sort of said what the is got um and she said giraffes on tour don't you know about that the whole aviation community is behind it and i thought how come, how come i don't know about it so please fire away and tell us what it's about um so giraffes on tour came I suppose came onto our radar about 12 months ago mm -hmm. um, and then when we started flying this season I reached out to Ian um, to say where can we get a giraffe to fly sustainably and Giraffes on Tour was put together by um, Louise's parents and Louise mm -hmm. sadly lost her life in 2013 yeah. when she was nine years old to leukaemia and she spent a, a considerable amount of time at Great Ormond Street Hospital mm -hmm. um, with Geoffrey, her beloved giraffe. And I think Lu Louise, Louise's Geoffrey is, they are together. Yeah, um, yeah. And when she passed away, and then with the Battle of Britain flight and various other people within the RAF community, they started to fly the Geoffreys. Yeah. And it yeah. now has an incredible following. It does. Um, one of them has just done the um, Canadian tour with the Red Arrows. Yeah, I saw that, um, yeah. What we do with our little Velis is sort of just like in the realms of we're down here and he's there, flying with some of the yeah. best of the best yeah. um, of all types of fighter jets and all sorts and it's a beautiful story that everybody has got behind i think yeah. to date just recently they passed the seventy thousand pound mark of which it's been yeah. raised for great ormond street i i'm going to put a link to giraffes on tour in the show that notes. would be amazing yeah because i'd ask anybody who's listening if you would donate as even a small amount it would it'd be so much appreciated and it's such a good cause and louise's story is on there um 
because I'm a father, you know, it, it touched me when I read it. I was quite upset about it, to be honest. It was um, something that I had no idea about. But we're going to basically, when we do the flights that we're planning to do, we're planning to put uh, to put towards every flight a donation. Very so much so. So we bought the new Pippa you know, Stroll in. Yeah. Uh, we bought a new Velis Electro in and working on both the thought patterns of a journey within the RAF with yeah. um, being at the likes of Moray. But also, then I suddenly realised that if we bought ERAF, it also says GRAF. GRAF, yeah. So GRAF yeah. is here now yeah. um, for the considerable, f- you know, for the yeah. future. Uh, we Everything we do is spoken to Louise's parents. Yeah. And for every flight that we do as an experienced yeah. flight, a donation will be given to us yeah. on tour for Great Ormond Street. Yeah. Um, so she flies under the name of Giraffe and yeah. she has the giraffes on her stickers on her yeah. and she has her own Jeffrey. Her own I'm not Jeffrey. sure where Jeffrey is, but Jeffrey's he's, around he's here currently, somewhere. Currently, I put him to work, right? Because okay, where he's is been, he? He's been around the building, but <laughs> yeah. he, he was sat in my seat last time I saw him. <laughs> um, and we came in with a set, we have a second Jeffrey uh, who hasn't been named today, but strangely enough, um, we've been sharing the hangar today with uh, Night Fright. Yes, yeah. And uh, the second jeffrey is going to begin a journey with night oh, awesome. so they're both here yeah. doing something to raise awareness absolutely for great the great Ormond Street. Street and giraffes yeah. on tour yeah that's amazing um so yeah like i say i'm going to put a, a link to giraffes on tour in the show notes i'm also going to put a link to nebo wear as well so Thank anybody you. who wants to reach out to kerry talk about the electric aircraft uh, please do if you want to come and fly the electric aircraft please contact us here at Alma and we can organize that for you so i think really that's we, i think we're about done aren't we <laughs> so i think we covered absolutely everything we wanted to talk about so i just wanted to thank you again kerry for coming on the podcast it's been a pleasure having you here pleasure getting involved in what you're doing as well i think it's a really it's good really course. exciting and thanks again kerry for coming on thank you for having us <laughs> All right. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to watch more videos like this one.